Okay, so this is the top four of the Italian Nationals. This is uh, my game against uh, Tamash. So I'm playing uh, Bratian, the wars to come. And Tamash is playing uh, Night's Watch Vedirian still, as you can imagine. We'll show you the um, how the other game finished at the end of this video. So this is um, one semi-final, the other is uh, a Stark filthy mirror match and uh, yeah perfect setup this time for me this under reducer and uh, an economy location so the other option was uh, setting up Alistair Florent that would have given me another card another reducer but um, getting Melisandre on the board and then being able to play Robert immediately is a kind of a dream start here And the reason I'm thinking here, so usually I would instinctively let uh, my opponent go first, but uh, with the Red Priest in hand, getting that first uh, chance to, to look at the hand and take that wall out or the Iron Throne out was, was tempting. But in the end I, uh, I decided to just uh, let my opponent go first and see what uh, he plays. Nothing scary on the board at the moment and giving me Gates of the Moon is certainly appreciated as well. No wall, no Iron Throne. But of course the draw keeps coming with this deck. And uh, the Raven will be drawing cards as well now. Just calculating what I can do on top of Robert. Obviously, Red Priest is. Uh <laughs> so, two copies of Great Ranging. I was tempted to take one here because um, it would then have to be played unprotected. So, uh, in case of Morgulis, wouldn't be saved. But that seized is uh, annoying as well. So that uh, gets put on the Iron Throne, of course, I'm uh, in big trouble here. So I took the, the ranging party because um, if one is played and then Red Priest gets killed by Morgulis, then uh, the other one is useless and I was hoping to get that uh, seized within trick claim here. <laughs> so now Iron Throne, which means Winning dominance is not guaranteed, so I wasn't sure what to do with my uh, uh, northern encampment here. Because uh, just having that and have it, having it be knelt for uh, the falling grounds is uh, trouble because um, I am uh, stuck with the. Uh, five gold at most and plus the reducer and the gates of the moon so uh, making sure that uh, the fifth one gets played as well here and uh, not uh, playing robert so the problem is two unprotected key characters obviously quickly dealt with by morgulis and i have no uh, no close call in this deck. I had it in a previous version, but I took it out, so I would then need to basically play the, the counters immediately. Play air and uh, play the Harris against against myself, just in case Morgulis was played, and uh, I wasn't willing to do that. But I did play enough characters, I think, here to uh, make sure I can win dominance because my opponent passes, so now it's a quick calculation that he has four and well, a, potential, a potential surprise in hand with uh, his agenda, but, but um, I wasn't uh, expecting that to happen, so I had some leeway here, I, need to, I needed to leave uh, Melisandre standing at least, and that would have been enough. 
And, uh, well, not happy to give my opponent cards. Obviously, the intrigue challenge takes one away, but uh, Tamash wasn't having a great start here, so giving him cards not something I wanted to do. But then the Raven will just draw now, and it's a hopeless trying to to keep this deck from drawing. And, uh, getting quick power, I think, was uh, more important. And I calculated that I could. Uh, Get the military as well. So this, uh, with Castle Black standing, this can be defended if uh, Halder is also used. There is, well, two two locations to be net, and then the Shadow Tower I think can trigger as well, but. No. And Missandra and another character standing were enough to still win dominance, but I there was no power claim and uh, I thought might be best not to give him one more card. So this not start in terms of power. Even with the wall, it, it takes a while to, to catch up. So I was happy to stay ahead because uh, I know that uh, Tamas can uh, get uh, into some really slow games that uh, take all uh, 55 minutes and uh, it doesn't catch up that quickly, even if uh, it's uh, very reliable and consistent. Okay, so now that. Um, Army will be coming in and happy to trade Alistair here for Robert. Robert uh, can be protected because I have a dub in hand and this give me, gives me some nil as well with Alistair going out right after Green Dreams checks the top card. So for the realm is decent, uh, basically an 8 gold plot but um, if you're playing it uh, as an opener, it, it beats uh, the gates for initiative, which is nice. But uh, here I was, um, I was quite happy to see this plot. I think in in Tamash's deck because with one initiative, he stuck with going first, and now I have that uh, summer hold, so I I can stop worrying about uh, my uh, ravens being sacrificed. As long as, of course, I can uh, stop the assault. So, big choice here. So, getting rid of, rid of the assault army also kind of uh, messes up Tamash's plan because that's the only army or stronghold card in hand. So, it's basically just a waste of gold. The other cards I was thinking of were uh, seized, which also messes with my summer hall plan and potentially the iron throne later and um, the other one was a hob because there were two so getting one makes uh, Morgulis that much more difficult for my opponent but I still had a, a scene in flames as well so I was quite happy to use that and uh, discard something else I'm just uh, thinking here whether uh, I was uh, guaranteed to win dominance. So taking one uh, encampment here to give myself a better chance, but uh, I kept one just in case something happened. With one encampment you can still uh, do pretty well. With a five gold plot that's, uh, that's still nine and uh, two reducers on the board. So. So the wall defense is basically set up now, but um, no wall to defend. And seized here <laughs> on the fifth them. Interesting choice. So obviously if he left it in hand, it uh, might have got discarded. 
so I think he was uh, searching for for another card with the agenda draw so just uh, use this one and uh, yeah happy to see that because uh, I was worried that it might do some damage and uh, it, it might have done here on the um, on, on summer hall instead because um, that still gets my raven sacrificed if I lose a power challenge so I cannot just uh, initiate a, a fake challenge with a one cost character just to kneel his character and um, and keep him knelt with uh, Robert no I don't throw on the board so I still need to do the calculation for dominance always try to at least use Robert because uh, he stands in any case and uh, with noun is nice occasion and stopping Melisandre so she cannot do the, the intrigue however I can still initiate that and uh, I think it goes through because uh, Harder doesn't have enough cards to me. I don't think that the Mason hurts that much because my opponent has plenty of characters. What he needs really is uh, a way to deal with Robert now, and uh, he needs the wall. This character is uh, kept knelt, of course. That's why I'm uh, I'm thinking which one to use for this uh, challenge. That is uh, sure to lose against Weimar Royce. So obviously, reducers have some use if they are still standing apart from just uh, doing the power challenge. But uh, if uh, the Harris is revealed, there is a, a greater chance that I would be keeping the Raven. And now, of course, the little guys stay knelt, and that's really a big problem for Tama. She has one milk, which, to be fair, he has a decent chance of drawing. He has uh, Raven and Hob every round from here on. Just uh, basically checking what happens if the Harris is revealed. And then I revealed myself because I was panicking here about uh, losing Melisandre. And I basically Uh, messed up my own uh, position with this I'm stuck with uh, two or three characters now while my opponent had uh, everything net so doesn't hurt him nearly as much so uh, commentating on this now we cannot find really any brilliant reason for revealing the Harris here so But the thinking was uh, <laughs> a bit of panic about uh, about losing uh, Melisandre, I think.
and now certainly my opponent has good chances of drawing what he needs with uh, 11 cards in hand and uh, stuff coming back for my uh, Red Priest as well. On the other hand, I'm left with a pretty bad hand here. No additional characters to be played. The Raven does nothing this round because there isn't a Winter or Summer plot and I uh, have no additional power to be gained with Dominance either. But at least the Intimidate and Assault army not hitting the board here. So I was just thinking what happens here if I place Lissy. Probably best to keep her for another round. I think uh, Tamash has no way to, to be in initiative against Withering Cold, so he is um, really stuck with um, with that. No way to um, counter it. Just play the milk on uh, Bench, and I was thinking if I should play the the traitor as well, but if he's already milked, I was thinking save that for something else, but then in Night's Watch you're not really finding the great targets for their um, for your negative attachments, usually. So just a wasted round, keeping my economy standing just in case I lose dominance here. And uh, can't even play Sin in Flames because uh, I have no ruler character. So just calculating this for how that I want to defend this, obviously, because um, I'm struggling with characters now after that stupid Duharis play. Yeah, Halder has enough uh, attachments. He can win this one if he uses everything, I think. But... Uh, not doing it here. It would mean sacrificing uh, that castle black basically. And now this one I cannot defend. But on the plus side I now have after this I have enough strength to win dominance, whatever happens, so no need to worry about that. And here I cannot initiate that power challenge because uh, my character gets knelt and uh, the woodsman gets stood by Castle Black, so... He will survive the, the Robert Neil while my reducer stays net, so nothing to be done with that. And it would have lost me dominance with it. No, still just about win dominance even with that. And now some ad additional draw here. With the Raven that puts Tamash on uh, ten cards with ten reserves, so well worth uh, just Throwing away the worst card here with uh, the Forest Hunter so that uh, Hop can draw an indexation. Discarding that ranging party, interesting. Well, there is another one in hand now, obviously. And easy call here for Robert. And now after that uh, little setback, I can play my draw plot here, I have plenty of economy. So I was confident that I would draw at least something and there was always that uh, Silesi play available. Although Withering Cold against this particular deck, you can keep uh, characters now at one round obviously to get some... Uh, 
maybe one or two challenges unopposed, guaranteed dominance when you go second, but then uh, against some decks with bar and yield, you they uh, stay nailed for another round and then maybe uh, only one or two additional characters uh, are marshaled, while this one I think can just swarm the board again. So uh, it's m the Silicine is the crucial thing, the Withering Cold. Uh, not that concerned with, especially since Robert basically does a similar job, better job in fact, because Withering Cold keeps Robert net as well, while his own trigger does not. And now we see that big army bringing in the Fist of the First Man. And this army has uh, the potential, of course, to mess with Summer Hall for me. Although, just uh, needing Summer Hall is not enough, you need to push the power challenge through as well. But we see the wall here, so uh, now all three characters need to be. Uh, kept for defense if uh, Thomas is going to defend the wall. So I have the chance for uh, even uh, more draw with uh, set down or deeds if I if I want to, but I'm um, ahead on power, so I'm reluctant to give uh, power away. I'm just thinking which character would be a good target here for uh, traitor. Pageant has another icon, while the Woodsman would be totally, basically incapacitated by, by traitor. But then, Benjen survives uh, the Robert Neil. Edric is pretty important here. I think I'm, I'm confident here that I can win dominance because Edric uh, gets rid of the great trenching if it's still standing. And the uh, Woodsman has um, has the traitor, so I only need to beat Benjen to win initiative. And this is where just passing, for instance. I'm on 5, so I have Dominance and the Raven that's 7 and 2 Infiltrators is 9. So not worth uh, going crazy with that just yet, but then uh, Winter Festival turn next round could get me close to victory. Although, on the other hand, if I do play Silici, may as well just use the Infiltrators. here because they get uh, nailed for two rounds then or maybe just uh, for the rest of the game with Robert even so just checking if something annoying is in hand here I go through each card because uh, I, I try to say it, say it out loud so that it um, stays in my mind try to memorize it for um, for the future but uh, I think in this instance it's uh, it's a little pointless. Just make a mental note that there are plenty of characters. So just um, look at the attachments instead. Strangler can uh, come into play in uh, the challenges phase with the agenda and uh, push a challenge through if needed. And so uh, just getting rid of the woodsman because that's the character that can get more draw. And the one I, I don't want to um, I don't want Thomas to have here of course is the Iron Throne because that um, that stops my uh, Ravens and anything else I might get here 
currently no chamber, no storms and no gantry. I'm just thinking whether it's worth uh, initiating a challenge because uh, one character is going to be stood with uh, Castle Black and the Grand Ranging has uh, insight so I'm giving cards away if I uh, do a challenge. Choosing the wrong character with Edric but still enough. <laughs> So these guys are useless after uh, the robber trigger, so I'm giving them away here. And now I can uh, decide what to do, whether to try with uh, Winter Festival, which Tamash I think cannot block, he has no summer plots. Uh, heads on spikes most likely hits, uh, because I got rid of... Um, he has two attachments, or had two attachments when I looked at the hand. And the others were characters, so decent odds. And the other option is Withering Cold with Slissy. I do have set down our deeds as well. So I could um, play Winter Festival and just go for some more draw to try to get the throne and the chamber. But since that's not guaranteed, I'm going for Daniel instead. And here the pointy end gets uh, Robert's dupe. Which means he now does get killed by Morgulis. If Tamash has time for that, of course. So Silisi needs the faction card, as does the set down our deeds. <laughs> and now Milking Robert, so no need to play Morgulis now. Uh, the faction card, so with uh, Withering Cold it stays now, so I cannot, uh, for instance, play Silisi. Then uh, Tamash plays Morgulis, and uh, I'm left with no characters, of course, and uh, I, I cannot. Uh, do the draw event then because uh, the faction card is net, so that was uh, a slight problem here. And it is a realistic prospect because uh, he has three characters that would survive Morgulis, and of course the wall is now set up, so. Nine power. So play Silisi first. That uh, needs everything. I'm on nine. So with three unopposed, that would be 12. Power would be power claim, I mean, would be 13. And dominance and Raven would win the game. However, I have two gold. So with uh, the two encampments, that gets me to five. And it's uh, just one short, because I'm left with two gold, and uh, Tamash has two as well. So if I do the three unopposed challenges, I'm uh, tying dominance. And I was, uh, I chose this one mainly for um, heads on spikes. I wanted to give myself a chance to to play that next round if I'm on 13, which I should be here.
Okay, so power obviously is the one I needed to do. For sure. Then I was thinking which character to leave standing here for uh, dominance. Dominance gets me two power. One for dominance and one for the raven. So I was thinking heads on spikes. If I play intrigue here, I might uh, chances I uh, chances are I will hit a character here and then my odds will go down. And if I play military, Tamash could potentially kill a character with an attachment, which get, gets an additional non-character in hand. So either way, my odds of hitting with uh, with that uh, heads are slightly reduced, whatever I do. And here we are hitting a character with uh, the entry claim. So not worth doing the military here because uh, I can get 2 with dominance and get to 14. Yeah, not so easy to see everything. But uh, that's definitely the right play. And now... So heads on spikes is an immediate win if it hits. I'm not sure what uh, the hand is now, of course, with that um, hob draw. And... Uh, something else coming out uh, and another card drawn so but uh, I do have another uh, winter festival of course and uh, I don't think uh, Tamash has any way to get power off my faction card apart from military uh, from power claims so if I'm on 14 he can get me down to 13 and uh, no way to stop my plot unless he plays a summer plot which then means he won't be playing Morgulis and then uh, everything I have survives but I don't think he has a summer plot in this deck so uh, if he plays Morgulis against Winter Festival I stay on 14 because um, there is no claim claim is zero so Unless he can uh, win before when the f Winter Festival triggers, it should be game over. And basically I know that he cannot win because uh, I saw his hand and I know his deck pretty well. So yeah. What can I say? So even if the wall was uh, on the board from the start, I think, uh, well, winning dominance uh, would have been a little more difficult with additional strength, but um, yeah, that wasn't such a problem. The Iron Throne was the one I didn't want to see, but uh, luckily my opponent uh, didn't get this time, so pretty good draw there for me. <laughs> okay. So we can have a look at the other game here as well. This is a uh, Stark Filthy Mirror, Gento on the bottom against uh, Paolo on the top of your screen. And uh, let's have a look. So we have uh, the city uh, chain for Paolo with coppers as the draw and uh, the Harris was uh, already played. Uh, interesting, completely different uh, plots. So I played against Argento in the Swiss. So I know uh, his deck pretty well. And uh, this one is um, a little bit different. And here we have the seven uh, plots. Basically, so we have the, the Maiden for Initiative, Mother for Draw, and then we have uh, two copies of Supporting the Faith which is interesting, so I guess that was um, 
supposed to, I'm guessing it was supposed to counter uh, the Tyrell line because that's the deck that really uh, takes advantage of the challenger's face gold so that's uh, slightly unlucky I think here for Agenta that uh, only one uh, Tyrell line was present in the tournament so I was going to say um, slightly different decks here because uh, we see a couple of cards for uh, Paolo here that uh, you don't see that often the core Greywind is on the board and then uh, that location at uh, the, the top left is is it last uh, hurt so that's the one that uh, increases strength if you have uh, multiple unique star characters participating in a power or an intrigue challenge I think and uh, on the bottom we see the fast steady with uh, Rob also for stand and uh, Skagos to get that basically on demand so that's a very quick deck that can uh, really rush with Renown in a single round losing uh, at the moment in uh, numbers 8 characters on one side and then uh, 11 on the other but uh, Argento is ahead on power and I think uh, the key characters here for him are uh, slightly stronger because he has that fast Eddie and he has Rob so he has an easy stand of the entire board while Paolo currently does not yeah so the plan is uh, quite straightforward here going all in on one challenge where you can have Eddie, Rob and whatever else has renowned so we have Arya for Stark and we have one of the ladies is it Daisy? Yeah, it's Daisy with Renown and then of course uh, Rob stands the board with Skagos and uh, do it again on the military challenge so Caitlyn defense which at least stops Edert from getting uh, an additional power but uh, if uh, Argento has enough strength to do this in the military challenge as well then this could be game over Count 26 here for Paolo. Yeah, 31 for Gento with one stealth. So he can just uh, win this one right here. So Paolo has the higher initiative here but even going first does not help him because he cannot do this uh, he cannot do the same plan because he has uh, he's missing uh, some key pieces he's missing Rob for the stand and of course uh, you still need a way to well he does have a way to stand on the man I guess Gravin can, uh, can always eat uh, one of the reducers but um, no rob and uh, plenty of renown here for Argento at the Winterfell as well just to stop any surprises so that's the semi-finals I guess uh, Argento is my final opponent the King of Swiss and uh, let's see how the rematch goes 
So hopefully you can join me for the final as well. Bye bye.